Can a royal live a normal life, get a job, and take an average wage? Let's be honest, not really. Still, that doesn't stop some from trying. She may be ninth in line to the throne, but Princess Beatrice has also held down a nine to five. Since 2016, Prince Andrew's eldest daughter has worked as the vice president of partnerships and strategy at software company Affinity. While she's never spoken openly about what exactly her position entails, some have speculated that she's essentially a brand ambassador for the company, using her name and celebrity to attract clients to the relatively new startup. Prior to taking on her role at Affinity, Beatrice had graduated from Goldsmiths, University of London. Years later, some of her friends told The Daily Beast that Beatrice is a hard worker. So it seems that the skills she learned there are being put to good use. Like her sister, Princess Eugenie has always tried to hold down a regular job. After attending Newcastle University, the younger daughter of Prince Andrew opted to spend her days surrounded by fine art. In 2017, the royal was promoted to director at Hauser & Wirth, a contemporary art gallery in London. She had worked in art houses and auctions since 2013, both in London and New York City, and, according to sources who have spoken to the media, is quite talented at what she does. Eugenie herself has said that her workplace motivation stems from her passion for her field. In 2016, she told Harper's Bazaar, I've loved art since I was very little. I knew I definitely wouldn't be a painter, but I knew this was the industry for me. I love being able to share my passion for art with people. It may seem odd that a royal who is so high in the line of succession would hold a relatively normal job, but according to their father, that was all by design. In a since-deleted Twitter statement, Andrew wrote, As a father, my wish for my daughters is for them to be modern, working young women who happen to be members of the royal family, and I am delighted to see them building their careers. Prince Andrew wasn't the only member of the royal family to insist his children lead normal lives and enjoy relatively normal opportunities. Famously, his elder sister, Princess Anne, denied both her children royal titles in the hopes that they'd have more freedom to choose what to do with their futures. As a result, both of her children now hold down less royal jobs, in addition to occasionally representing the firm in an official capacity. My brother and I have both been able to do the things we've done and, yeah, I think we're very lucky and it's, it's worked. Anne's eldest, Peter Phillips, is 17th in line to the throne. He's also a booked and busy sports and entertainment agent. After graduating with a degree in sports science from the University of Exeter in 2000, Phillips took a job in the offices of a Formula One racing team. He spent several years in the role before transitioning to the head of global sponsorships for the Royal Bank of Scotland. Using all the connections he had picked up in those positions, Phillips eventually opened his own agency, Sports and Entertainment Limited, in 2012. Sports and Entertainment Limited does a bit of everything, from creating and running original events to connecting potential sponsors with elite athletes and performers. And one of their biggest clients? None other than Phillips' younger sister, Olympic equestrian Zara Tyndall. Like her older brother, Zara Tyndall also has a day job in the sports and entertainment field. After graduating from the University of Exeter with a degree in physiotherapy, Tyndall pursued a career as a professional equestrian. She spent around 15 years in the saddle, competing at a series of international events before taking an extended leave of absence to raise her family. During this six-year break from sports, Tyndall took on a new behind-the-scenes role in the world of horse racing. In 2019, she accepted a position as the director at Cheltenham Racecourse. She told the Jockey Club, I'm passionate about horse racing, particularly on the jump side, and the absolute pinnacle of that is Cheltenham. It's an honour to have been asked, to get involved in a more formal capacity, and I look forward to doing my bit to support the executive team in the years to come. As far as we can tell, Tyndall has remained in this position in the years since. She has also returned to the ring as a competitor, representing the UK at events such as the Land Rover Kentucky three-day event in April 2023. While the monarchy in the Netherlands has very limited powers, 
King Willem Alexander's schedule is still packed with public appearances, charitable endeavours, and the occasional constitutional task. Of course, that hasn't kept him from working as normal a job as he can possibly manage. The King earned his private pilot's license back in 1985 and his commercial pilot's license two years later. These accomplishments mean that he is able to fly passenger aircrafts such as Boeing 737. I just want to tell you both good luck. We're all counting on you. In a 2017 interview with Der Telegraph, he revealed that those licenses hadn't just been taking up space in his wallet either. Willem Alexander explained that he had been working as either a guest pilot or co-pilot about twice a month for a commercial airline, and he'd been doing it for decades too. Willem Alexander told the outlet that the pressures of his official role are what motivated him to pursue this ordinary career. He said, You can't take your problems from the ground into the skies. You can completely disengage and concentrate on something else. That, for me, is the most relaxing part of flying. Prior to taking on her royal duties, Mary, Crown Princess of Denmark, also worked an ordinary gig. Born in Australia and raised between there and the US, Mary graduated from the University of Tasmania in 1994. She initially went into advertising and spent several years pushing pencils at some of the country's largest agencies finally working her way up to a sales director position in the early 2000s. She met her future husband, Crown Prince Frederick, during the 2000 Olympic Games, and before long, she had relocated to Denmark. In 2002, Mary was hired by Microsoft Business Solutions as a project consultant. The future princess held that position up until her engagement in 2003, swapping her private sector job for a gig as a full-time working royal. But her time as an ad executive seems to have made her all the more aware of the issues the people of Denmark face in their own lives. Mary established the Mary Foundation in 2007 and uses her platform to advocate for the likes of equality, empathy and environmental sustainability. In 2022, she told the Financial Times, I've always had a strong sense of justice, that everyone should have the same opportunities, no matter where you come from. Marie Chantal, Crown Princess of Greece, doesn't have to worry about walking that fine line between her part-time gig and her royal duties. In 1973, the country's monarchy was abolished, and the royal family that she had married into in 1995 was forced into exile. While Marie Chantal and her husband, Crown Prince Pavlos, had enough hereditary wealth to live off of indefinitely, they both elected to get day jobs too. For her part, Marie Chantal started a self-titled children's clothing brand with both luxury and high street lines. I wanted to design a beautiful line of children's wear for the mother who wanted to find a brand that had a little bit of everything. In a 2022 interview with Shia Lux, the royal credited her entrepreneurial parents with giving her the inspiration to start her own venture. She said, my father remains a great role model to this day. Despite being a busy businessman traveling the world, he was also a wonderful family man. Raising my five children while also being a wife and having a career is something I always wanted to emulate and achieve. Marie Chantal's status as a Greek royal has opened plenty of doors for her, allowing her business to grow at an impressive rate, but it hasn't all been smooth sailing. She told the outlet there have been plenty of times when she struggled to balance work and motherhood, as her children split their time between London and New York City. During the COVID-19 pandemic, many folks found themselves without jobs as the world shut down around them. Sweden's Princess Sophia, however, found herself holding down a regular job for the first time ever. The young royal began working at Sophia Hemet Hospital, where she acts as honorary chair in March 2020. Her position was voluntary and entirely non-medical, but it did require her to complete an intensive training course. The palace released a statement that said, In the crisis we find ourselves in, the princess wants to get involved and make a contribution as a voluntary worker to relieve the large workload of healthcare professionals. While it's unclear how long Sophia remained at the job, there's still something to be said for her willingness to step into the fray, especially when she could have easily remained tucked away in her palace. Fourth in line to the Swedish throne, 
Princess Marta Louise is the eldest child of King Harold V and Queen Sonia. She's also a self-proclaimed clairvoyant. In 2007, Marta Louise decided to use her apparent abilities for personal gain and opened a spiritual school that aimed to teach people to, in her words, get in touch with their angels. The program led to other opportunities, including appearances on the webinar circuit and various publishing deals. On the other hand, Marta Louise's entrepreneurial efforts caused enough controversy that she soon agreed to stop styling herself as HRH to avoid further conflict. The school would eventually shut its doors, but that doesn't mean Marta Louise has stepped away from her chosen career path. She has since began working with clients privately alongside her fiancé, Shaman Duruk Verit. He told People magazine, Her powers are intense. I see things. She sees the blind spot of what I see. So when I see something in someone, she comes in and completes the picture from the other side. Sarah Ferguson's time as a working member of the royal family may have been short-lived, but she is still regarded as an official member of the firm. However, given her status as a divorcee, she doesn't necessarily benefit from the royal coffers. Despite a generous settlement after the end of her relationship with Prince Andrew, Fergie must fund her own lavish lifestyle. Over the past several decades, the Duchess of York has held down a number of jobs, from British TV host and Today Show correspondent to Weight Watchers spokesperson. One, two, three. It's working for me. Her most successful endeavour to date has been as an author. She has written a series of children's books that have since been turned into an animated series. Her adult novel debut, 2021's Her Heart for a Compass, was also a bestseller and has reportedly caught the interest of a number of streaming services. Then, in May 2023, it was announced that Ferguson was set to become a podcast host on Tea Talks with the Duchess and Sarah. According to the podcast Spotify page, the weekly series will see Fergie and her co-host, entrepreneur Sarah Thompson, engage in candid conversations about their lives, families and careers. These days, Prince William is heir apparent to the British throne, but he once held fewer responsibilities and even held down a relatively normal job. Beginning in 2015, William worked as a helicopter pilot for the East Anglian Air Ambulance Team, a charitable organisation that provides care to critically ill and injured patients across the UK. While he largely kept his work away from the public eye, his bigger rescues occasionally warranted him a few headlines. According to a statement released by Kensington Palace in 2014, William planned to donate every penny of his earnings to charity. As William became more prominent within the royal family, he found that he could not continue juggling his career with his official responsibilities. William retired in 2017, explaining that the experience had been both moving and educational, giving him a profound respect for the country's emergency service workers. 